What's up guys, Mr. Roland here, and welcome to Art Design. Today, I have a challenge drawing for you. Now I call it a challenge drawing because it is challenging. But I'm gonna show you some techniques and give you some tips to take something that's really complex that you might think like, oh, I could never draw that. And I'm gonna show you how to get it onto the page. And we're gonna be working from a photo that I've taken from my neighborhood um, of a landscape. I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. I know, I know it looks overwhelming. There's so much detail in that. There's so many trees, buildings, cars, roads. It almost seems impossible to get on the page. And, you know, if you just started, it might. It might come out really kind of off balance. So what techniques can we use to simplify this process and make it a lot easier for us to draw? So the first thing is what's called one point perspective. And if you notice the road here on either side of the freeway, if you were to trace those lines, they would converge at a certain point to this one point on the horizon line. And it's not that the freeway is shrinking, it's just this is an illusion that is caused when you look at something receding into the distance. It gets smaller and smaller the further it is away from you. So we're definitely gonna start off with some one point perspective. There's also another type of perspective that's less known, which is uh, atmospheric perspective. Now look at those buildings off in the background. I've been in those buildings, I've stood out right in front of them, and when you get up close to them, they look like obsidian. They're, they're black, shiny glass, most of them. So why don't they look like that from a distance? And that's because there's all of this atmosphere or air in between the viewer and the building itself. So it distorts the image and it makes things that are off in the distance, look faded or fuzzy. So once we do the one point perspective, we're also gonna draw those buildings very lightly. We're not gonna put them in dark. You're gonna draw them fuzzy. Look, they're just a little bit darker than the sky around them. But still, even those two techniques alone, you're like, well, how do we get it all on the page so it looks right? So we're gonna cheat. I love cheating when it comes to art. We're gonna use what's called a grid technique. And this is where, so what I've done, I have my photo uploaded into Google Slides, and all I did was I put a line right down the middle of it in either direction. So now I've divided it visually into these four quadrants, and it's much more easier to manage because I can see, for example, that the freeway goes right through the middle of the page where the lines intersect. So that's gonna help me on the setup, but let's make it even easier on ourselves. Let's make a more complex grid. So what I did was I just divided those four quadrants up into four smaller sections. So instead of four big sections, we have 16 now. And this is, it's, you're just gonna be able to cook along with the drawing because you can look back at the, this picture and see like what's in the top right quadrant, what's in the bottom right, right quadrant. It takes all of the guessing of how this goes onto the page out. And you're gonna end up with this really nicely done landscape. So what I want you to do is screenshot this so that you have this image to work from because you should always be working from a visual image rather than trying to do it from memory because you always misremember things. And you shouldn't just be going off of what I'm drawing because you need to you know, learn how to do this on your own. So go ahead, screenshot that. And then I'm gonna start drawing my, uh, I'm gonna start sharing my drawing screen. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw this grid in together. And you're gonna be like, why are we drawing this grid in? If I have to erase it at the end, I just wanna start with the drawing. This really is gonna save you a ton of time. It seems counterintuitive because you have to take time to draw the grid and you have to take time to erase it, but it's gonna really help you set it up perfectly and reduce the amount of time you're gonna spend adjusting things. So let's go ahead and start putting that grid in. Let me share my drawing screen. Now, the paper, first things first, you want to turn it into landscape orientation. This means side to side. So what I have here is a larger paper, but I've just drawn in the outline of a normal size piece of printer paper because I'm going to be writing stuff off to the side. Let's make our first line. So I've divided it right in half. And I'm going to draw my stuff kind of dark so it shows up on the page, but uh, on the camera, but you should be drawing everything insanely lightly. You just want to be able to barely see your lines so that you're not, you know, because if you go to, if you gouge into this and then you go to erase it when you're done, you're still going to see the grid and it's going to look kind of funky. So let's eyeball this this way. Okay. 
Did I get that right? Yep, that's pretty good. And then divide this one in half. And it's okay if they're slightly off. And if you don't have a ruler, it's okay. You can sketch these out as well. It just takes a little bit longer. Oh, see, it's slightly off, but I'll let it slide. There we go. And then we're going to divide these in half now. And you can see mine are slightly off too, but it's okay. So you can work with the imperfection. And if you're really taking your time, you could have measured this all out, but this will suffice for now. So I have on my screen, the image open. And I'm gonna be using that as reference to draw from. So you should have it open as well on your computer. All right, and let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is that one point perspective that I talked about. One point perspective. And we can see now that we've broken this down that the side of the freeway goes right through the center of the page and it comes right out to the corner too. And then it's gonna end just below this top line here. And once again, I'm drawing my stuff dark just so it can show up on the camera, but you should do all everything. I always tell my students, start off drawing light because you're gonna make a mistake and you wanna, or you wanna be able to erase it. If you gouge into the page, it's gonna leave a permanent mark. And now I can see I'm looking back at the photo that the other part of the freeway comes down here and then it's gonna end slightly up into this quadrant over here. So let's put that end mark. That's right about there. And so if we were to follow these lines, they would come to one point, but we're not gonna do that. So we don't really need to have that finished piece. Let me go ahead and erase that. Cause this is where the freeway ends. The freeway just kind of curves off to the, the side here. So I'm gonna put in a light mark for where the freeway ends. And the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna jump straight into the atmospheric perspective on the buildings in the background. I'm gonna do a light line for the uh, rolling hills for our horizon line. And since this curves off to the side, there's actually plants right here in the background. And they go up to not quite the middle of this box up here. And I'm just doing very life like kind of gestural sketches for it because I'm gonna come back to it. Okay, so there's that and then it connects over here. And it goes, it doesn't get really high and I'm, I'm gonna leave out the trees for right now and I'm just gonna do the kind of ridge line. And our buildings are gonna be tucked back in here. And that comes down over here. And then this part is just up here. This is the only flat part of the horizon line. All right, so already, just in that small amount of time, because we have the grid, we were able to put in the freeway and our horizon line, and we're pretty certain that they're in an accurate location. Um, so now let's come down over into this section, and we got this big kind of curved mound over here, and it comes from the middle of this box over here. It almost passes up right through the corner here, but not quite, and then wraps around to the middle of this one. See, I love that. Look, so you know, it goes from the middle here to the middle here. So if we didn't have those grids, you'd be like, where is this stop and start? So it's a really easy way to map it out. Then we have this house over here. So let's go ahead and put that. And we know the house is above this line, the roof of it at least. And so we can put that in. Okay. 
it comes just about there. It's not too big. At a slight angle too. See, and if you didn't have this, you might draw this because you tend to give things that you know more importance on the page. So you might draw this house if you didn't have these grids a lot larger than it actually is. So once again, we're just, we're saving ourselves a ton of time by doing this. And there's this really big tree here in the foreground. I'm gonna do the outline for this tree. And this is, you know, a great assignment because you have to make artistic decision, decisions. You, what am I gonna keep in this drawing? What am I gonna get out of it? Uh, what do I wanna leave out, sorry? Because it is a bit overwhelming on the details. So I'm gonna be blocking in just like the major shapes like I'm gonna kind of blend the trees together so that it makes kind of one clump of green and I'm gonna outline that rather than trying to do every single tree. Um, if you want, you can on the back end when you go to color it and put all that detail in, but you don't really need to. You can still get a sense of what's going on without it. There's this road that curves over here. And it curves up here and meets the freeway. And if you've been to this area, this is actually a secret entrance to Dodger Stadium. This is going into the back neighborhoods that I've gone dozens of times. And it's a really quick, easy way to get in. So Dodger Stadium would be right over here if I were to move the camera over. All right, I'm going to block in some shapes back here for this back row of trees. And then one more line of trees back here. Just blocking in the big shapes. There we go. And there's this line that cuts down here. Up to the side. All right, now let's go ahead and block in some of the shapes. There's this big Kind of dead patch of grass up here. I'm going to just do a kind of shape for that. Okay, and then coming back over here, there's a tree that sticks out. I'm going to block that in. So I'm just doing, these are all organic shapes, just kind of standing in. Oh, I'm going to get this slope line that comes down here, and this goes above the middle. It's more dead grass. And it comes in, and it runs into the side of the freeway just about. Then there's a big tree here. I'm going to block that in. I'm going to block a whole section of trees in up over here. Just one tree that comes up to the middle of this line. And then there's a whole slope of trees that come down here. So when you go to color this, you can just add different tones of dark green and light green to kind of give the illusion of the variation and you don't need to draw every single tree in. Okay. And there's a wall over here and there's railing on the side of the freeway. So let's go back and use that one point perspective to help us install that. So the railing is going to go or the fencing, it's going to disappear. So it's going to start off kind of big over here and then it's going to disappear off in the distance because it gets smaller. And you can go ahead and put in the fence post for that. And 
and they start off close to, or farther apart and then they get closer together as they go down. And then there's this cement wall off to the side here that ends here. Ooh, I drew this in the wrong place. That goes up here. See, even Mr. Roland makes mistakes, and that's why I didn't draw that in too dark. I'm glad that I caught that. So this block wall comes just under here. And there's ivy that hangs down on the side of it, so we can block in some shapes for the ivy. There's some plants up here. It's mostly dead grass in that section. And let's go ahead. This looks a little barren, so I want to put in some of the shapes for the plants over here. We have a tree that's hanging over. The road here. So I'm just blocking in the shape of this tree. And I'm constantly looking back and forth at the photo to make sure that I'm putting these plants all in the right location. There's a bunch of dead plants over here, a little patch of dead grass right there. All right, what could we do next? Let's put in the lanes of the freeway. And since at this point I kind of know where things are, I can erase some of the guidelines because they're just going to be in my way. So and you can see, you might be able to see mine still because I put them in so dark on mine so that you could see it. So I'm just going to erase some of them. I know they're going to be in the way. And there's five lanes, so I'm going to try to even that out as nicely as I can. There's one lane, two, three, and there's this little bit of a wall over here. So I'm going to put that in too, and that should secure that up. There we go. All right. So just by putting those lines in, it turned it. It looked kind of just flat and like it possibly could be a river. It could be a dirt road. So by adding these lanes in, it gives us more of a sense that it's flowing in this direction and that it is actually a freeway. But LA freeways, what do they always have? These big signs. So let's go ahead and put this sign over the freeway here. And you can erase whatever's behind it. And then I'm not even, because it's so tiny, I'm just gonna kind of imply that there's writing on it just by putting some squiggly lines. Freeway sign squiggly lines. More over here. If you want to get really clever, you want to put the, the shadow of it on the ground, which goes across. But once again, the detail that you put in um, is up to you. You can have this really simplified and abstract, or you could go for that high level of realism to try to make it look as accurate as possible. It's a personal decision. I'm going in the middle range. I just kind of want it to look like the landscape. 
All right, missing the cars. So let's go ahead and put some of those in. And the cars, I'm not gonna put a ton of time on them because they're so far off, they kind of just look like blobs of dark color. So I'm gonna do that and just kind of make sure they're the general shape of the car. And then by the time they get off in the distance, they're just kind of little dots of color. All right. And finally, let's go in and put in the atmospheric perspective. And once again, that's when things are off in the distance, the color tends to get distorted and faded. So we're gonna put in our skyline back here of these skyscrapers, I'm gonna do it very lightly. And they don't come up anywhere near the middle of this box, There's, everything's resting below the middle stuff. If I touch the middle, that's okay, but I don't wanna go any higher than that. All right, and then I'm, I'm gonna shade them in just ever so lightly to make them look kind of fuzzy. If you were to put these, I'm telling you, if you were to darken these in, it would just throw off the balance. It would look like they were right in front of you. So you wanna make them really soft so that they look far off in the distance. And we got a radio tower over here that we need to put in. And this is probably the highest thing in the whole drawing. It goes not quite to the top, but, and it's a radio tower, so it's, Got these weird kind of lattices on it. And I'm just gonna apply that. And then it's got, you know, little dots of color too for these little satellites that are on it. And then we got a little building over here. I think this is the water and power building. Same thing for this one, atmospheric perspective, soften it up. You don't wanna darken that in. Okay. Now I'm looking back at my photo and I'm looking at this and this is just the brass tacks, the bare minimum. We've used one point perspective. If we just use atmospheric perspective. And the whole thing was done with the grid technique. Okay. And now it just comes down to a personal decision. What do I want to include? What do I don't want to include in the detail? Like you could spend hours on the detail on this and really make it hyper realistic, or you could color it in as is, just put in some darks, some variations on greens and browns for the hillside, different colors here in these organic shapes, a very soft blue for the skyline, or you could go abstract and, or, and express yourself and add colors that you wouldn't normally see in nature. Like you could have pink plants and, um, hyper blue hills and then have a green sky, flip it around, really comes down to what you want. But before we get there, let's go ahead and final step, erase the grid as best we can. And then we're gonna go back over it one time with detail and see if there's anything that we wanna add back into this that is gonna heighten the drawing. And so look, yeah, this is the problem. If you draw it in darkly, I'm erasing some of my details, so I'm gonna have to go back in and touch these things up. But once you go over this with the color, oh man, you won't notice any of that, and you'll have this perfectly positioned landscape, make you look like a pro. And, you know, depending on what you're, doing a painting of, you might not need one point perspective, you might not need atmospheric perspective, but say you want to draw anything from a photo, you can always use this grid technique to help transfer an image. 
as long as the photo and the, the paper or canvas that you're going to draw on are relatively the same size. Because say I was drawing the photo was a square and this was a rectangle, it would distort the image. So the canvas behind me, you see over here, would work because it's relatively the same dimensions as a piece of paper, just blown up maybe five or six times. So I'm going to go back now. I'm going to kind of go over these sections that I erased. Oh, and there's more grid lines. Get rid of this one here. And I think I'm going to add in because the subtle things like adding that little shadow right there kind of helped and adding the signage. <clears throat> so off to the side here, I left out some of the detail on the building. So I'm revisiting that and I'm seeing that I could add in this window here. That's going to look pretty cool. Well, just a little accent to the piece. So I'm going to put that in and darken that up. There is a street lamp that comes up right here to the middle of the roof. So these little things go a long way and it's just this attention to detail that'll make your piece stand out. And this curves up. It kind of goes over the freeway. So that's a pretty cool little added piece. And then there's signs on the side of the road here see, there's a turnout one right here. With an arrow line. Hmm. There's another sign there, but I don't want to cram it in. So that's a decision that you have to make. What do you want to include? What do you not want to include? What do you think is going to look good? I really like there's these cracks on this last lane. I'm going to go ahead and put those in. And I'm just going to do that by, I'm not like looking at each one, like really meticulously copying where it is. I'm just kind of making, it almost looks like lightning to me. I'm just making squiggly lines that kind of mimic the position of it because you could go overboard here and adding these cracks and it just would start to look crammed and kind of look a little weird. So go easy on it. And once again, these are fading already. I'm already at this point in the photo having a hard time seeing them because of the atmospheric perspective. They're just losing detail. So I'm not going to draw them because if you drew them really dark over here, it would look weird if they were the same level of darkness here. And I'm looking at it now, man, you could really find a ton of detail in here. I'm looking at it now and there's like a lines that slant down on the side of the freeway. I'm gonna see what that looks like if I put those in. And this is dangerous if you put these in because it could throw off your perspective if you slant these lines too much. So you don't want them like too curved or too ever, it's gonna throw off the the view and these once again they start out further apart and then they get closer together. So I kind of like this but if you do it too dark it'll just turn your freeway into a checkerboard and it'll just look weird or it'll look like the flooring like black and white dance floor. So you don't want that and I've already messed up see it starts to make it if you keep them at that same angle it starts to make it look like it's sloping down to the side. So I made a mistake. I'm going to go back and erase them. And those start to flatten out and by the time they get here, they're almost going straight across like that. There we go. Much better. Even angle these ones slightly. All right, so now we have this nice, beautiful flowing freeway that draws the viewer's eye in to this downtown landscape. Um, we've done that with one point perspective. 
this has atmospheric perspective because it's fuzzy and distorted and off in the distance. And we've accomplished all of this by using the grid technique. Now I highly recommend, I personally, I use the grid technique whenever I'm transferring a photo onto a large canvas. It really works as long as you have the proportions right. Um, and the final process comes down to what do you want to include and what colors do you want to include? So I'm going to leave that up to you. But if we just do a little cursory examination, let's see what we've included from the seven elements of art. We definitely have wine. We have the vanishing lines from the one point perspective. We've turned most of our line work into shapes that are mostly organic, but we have both. We have organic shapes and we have geometric shapes because we have this big triangle here. We have these big blocky shapes here, but everything else is a very natural organic shape. Um, we have not really added value because that would be, you know, this one is so complex. So we haven't added too much light or dark, but we have a little bit of dark here. Everything else is pretty much the same tone. So if you didn't want to color this in, then you would add dark tones and light tones to kind of show the, the shading. So for example, here on this tree, if I wanted to show that this was right up next to me, I would put a darker tone and shade it in and give this value by shading it in. And that helps to give this whole thing a little bit more dimension. So, and you could do that over here as well because these trees are relatively the same sh shade of dark green. But you could also save this too if you just wanted to color this portion in dark green. So already doing that, that helps <clears throat> this stand out and pop out a little bit more. I'm gonna shade this one in dark. So that's a little bit of value. This is really dark over here as well. And everything that's closer to you is gonna be a little bit darker because of the atmospheric perspective. Everything closer is gonna look crisper and everything further away is gonna be a little faded. So you can see this is much darker over here in the corner than the buildings off in the background. But I'm not doing the whole thing. It's gonna take way too long for this presentation. So we got a little bit of value and you can represent that with a value scale. So you go all the way from dark darks, all the way to light light, depending on how you shade it in. And what's next? Do we have texture? I think so. We drew these cracks in the side of the road that looks realistic. Um, we have the nice kind of rough outline for the trees to show that they are, are this nice organic shape. So we've got a little bit of texture, but you could spend time on that also with the coloring to make it appear as if it feels like it's an implied texture, if it feels a certain way just by drawing it in. And we've definitely created space by using the one point perspective and the atmospheric perspective. So we have this foreground, midground, background. It's receding off into space because of this one point perspective. I see a lot of times uh, kids will draw this the freeway the same width here and the same width over here. So, and it distorts the space. And the one thing that we really left out is color. Color is insanely personal. And you see a lot of abstract expressionists or impressionists or expressionist artists, and they choose the colors that they wanna include. They're not a slave to the photo. They don't, they're not trying to be as realistic as they possibly can, but you can go for that. So if you wanted to go for high level of realism, you would try to match the colors in the photo, but you don't have to do that. And I'm gonna leave that completely up to you. Okay, so I really hope you guys use this. I really hope you guys use this grid technique on your own and not just in this application that I've shown you. Um, and that would be the best way to learn. Find a picture that you wanna turn into a drawing or a painting or a watercolor and see if you can transfer it over from the photo onto the page realistically using that technique. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed.